Uh, you might have heard me talking about this just a minute ago in my monologue, but new figures from the NHS in England show that children are being prescribed anti-anxiety medications in record numbers. More than 122,000 under 18 year olds were prescribed them over the past year. We're going to talk about this now. I'm so happy to say that uh, the journalist who wrote the piece that I was talking about has uh, joined us in the studio, Lucy Johnson from the uh, Sunday, Sunday Express. Sunday Express. Health yeah. editor. That's right. Now, yeah. It got a lot of response, this piece, yesterday when it went online. I know it, it made a lot of noise on social media and it, and it alerted me to this particular issue. Why did you feel the need to write it? Well, it's part of a campaign that we've been doing at the Sunday Express, um, a crusade for better mental health for children, which started really at the beginning of the lockdowns. Uh, a lot of doctors and specialists were warning that um, locking down for children, uh, you know, is a it's quite a serious thing to do. It's a developing brain. It's a massive experiment on uh, on that group, and um, you know they were worried about the effects. And I think we're still really uncovering that. But we can see um, that you know we have record numbers of children who want who need mental health services. And yeah. so, who did you who did you talk to for the, the, the facts around the piece? Who did you interview? Around this piece, um, I talked to uh, Professor Mark Antonio Svada, who, um, so the piece uh, really focused on the fact that children, young children, are being prescribed Valium, mm -hmm. which is a very controversial drug um, because it's so, um, has, uh, it's, you can become dependent very easily. Um, and it's really used for anxiety. Um, it's controversial in adults and children, uh, more controversial in children, the developing brain, we don't know what effects it'll have. Um, and withdrawal is very, very hard. So uh, it was a surprise to me, um, even though I write about this subject all the time, that we have record numbers, rising numbers of children being prescribed mm. Valium, Lithium, these drugs that are used to sedate. Yeah. Um, and it appears, you know, uh, that the, the doctors have run out of mm. ideas about what to do because the mental health services are overwhelmed. Yeah. I mean, what's the most sort of shocking thing you've heard from a doctor in this field? I mean, whether it's a statistic on how many children are being, or a particular case from, from a doctor? Well, um, there's so many shocking things. The, uh, last week, we did a piece about the fact that uh, more than four in 10 children are refused um, mental health treatment, uh, professional mental health treatment, even if they have uh, self-harmed, uh, suicidal ideation, or psychosis. Some cases uh, that doctors have talked about include children who were refused because uh, one boy, I think, had uh, a ligature in his room, a rope, and there were no marks around his neck, and so they, he was refused on those grounds. Uh, another child was refused, even though they had attempted to commit suicide. The services are overwhelmed. Not everywhere. Some parts of the country are better than others. Mm. But in some parts of the country, there are up to three-year waits for mm. child and adolescent mental health. So services. do you think it's that desperation, Lucy? You know, I know you've got a teenager, as I do, and when your child is, well, there's that saying, isn't there, you're only ever as happy as your most unhappy child. And I think that is so true. And mums and dads, will be looking at their teenagers who, I don't know whether you heard what I was saying about the fact that they've lost the ability to plan, their future was so uncertain, it still feels uncertain to them. And the parent is just desperate and they would probably ideally get them some sort of counselling or talking therapy to, to lift their mood. But in the absence of that, do you think they are reluctantly therefore reaching for medication? It's hard to know what's going on or why these children are being medicated, but I would say it's like a patch up job the services are not there. They weren't there, you know, during the pandemic. And, you know, we've now got also a catch up. Um, we have, I think, one child being referred to mental health services every 30 seconds now. It's racing towards a million referrals a year. And um, we just haven't got the capacity. I mean, to be fair, the government is putting money into it, but it's no, it's not enough. It's mm -hmm. a sort of drop in the ocean. So I think 
doctors, um, some doctors have even just stopped referring children to CAMS because, or child and adolescent mental health services yeah. because they realise they're not going to get, a, you know, the children aren't going to get seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, a three-year wait in some parts of the country, it's not worth doing, is it? So I think it's, it's a patch-up job. It's de desperate, you know, just something, doing something. Because I think there's a lot of self-harm. There's um, there panic is. attacks. And I think if you imagine putting children you know, in and out of their, locking them in their rooms or in, in their homes for on and off for two years, you know, you get um, children who become agoraphobic, become mm, yeah. frightened of going out. There are parents who are very worried about the virus and don't want their children, you know, there's all sorts of reasons and it's sort of, you know, the end of the road really and this is one of the, mm. the legacies. Mm. It's so depressing. I mean, we're sat here as adults and we're depressed even talking about it, aren't we? I mean, what's the solution, Lucy? What, what do we do? I, I'm asking you as a mum as much as, as a journalist who specialises in this now, because what do we do in the absence of not wanting to medicate teenagers? What are, well, what are I think that we talk a lot about... Um, so there's various things. Um, the Young Minds is running a campaign to open up uh, sort of hubs like youth centres mm -hmm. where, you know, you may not have the same... You won't necessarily have a psychiatrist or someone with... Um, all the um, uh, qualifications, but they can spot, you know, people could go in, play on a console or, mm. you know, just um, have, have, company. A, have company. And if there's um, an alert to perhaps an eating disorder or something, they could then signpost that child. But a lot of children, you know, if you can catch problems early on, mm. um, and I know these children who are being medicated are not, we've lost that. Yeah. But if we can catch some of these children early on and, you know, you can prevent so much in the future. I mean, the other thing I would say is that, you know, you know, we're, we're talking now about putting in restrictions again for autumn because there's a rise in COVID cases and, you know, people are worried. You know, it's this what, focus on one disease yeah. and one problem uh, and public health is not about one the disease. And, of everything else. The, and so I think never lock down again uh, for yeah. COVID because yeah, I think, absolutely. you know, if we are going to put restrictions in this autumn, we're going to see an increase in problems. All right. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you for all the work that you carry on doing. Well, thank, well. You. thank, thank you. Thank you for having me on. It's yeah, a pleasure. Please join thank us you. again. It's obviously an issue that won't go away very quickly. Lucy Johnston, that health.